What's up, everybody? Justin here, back with a new fantasy booking of the WCW in the year 2000. Fantasy booking of WCW 2000. So far, I've booked a lot of most of the year 2000 because, I'm sorry, the real... WCW in 2000 and what they did was absolute garbage. Absolute shit what they did. And the real WCW in the year 2000, it was absolute garbage in my opinion. And I'm not sorry if you're a Vince Russo fan. That guy fucked up WCW in... He's one of the reasons they died. Yeah, they are losing money way before he got there, but I blame him. I blame him. I'm not going to blame Bischoff. I blame Russo. Because the guy was awful at his job. The guy was god-awful at his job. And guess what? Maybe he had a lot of success during the Attitude Era because Vince McMahon was his boss. The guy, when he went to WCW, the guy was absolute, just got awful at his job, at whatever the hell he did, had a creative. The guy was awful. And uh, another thing, when he left WWF, what happened? They got bigger and bigger and bigger and better and better and made more money than they've ever made without Russo. The Attitude Era might have been... One of the most successful times for the biggest ratings. But that's not just because of WWF. Wrestling in general. In 96, 97, 98, 99. Wrestling in general was on fire. Every company was doing well. Not just WWF. WCW was killing it. ECW is killing it. They had sold out crowds everywhere. And they got on pay-per-view. So yes, the Attitude Era, we're never going to probably ever see ratings again of 7.1s, 7 million people watching get on Monday nights. But that's because I the record ratings that happened in the Attitude Era it was not thanks to Vince Russo, my opinion. It was because the business was on the upswing. The business was absolutely on fire and could do no wrong. I mean, I'm, I don't like bringing this up, but you had the Owen Hart tragedy. Did that stop anybody from watching? No, it didn't. Because the business was on fire in 99. So, again, my opinion, Russo is not the reason why Raw got record ratings. They would have anyway, because they were against WCW. They were in a Monday Night Wars. Fans were going back and forth. Or some fans were staying on WWF. Some fans were staying with WCW exclusively. I was a WWF guy always, but I did go back and forth a lot, and I did try to watch Nitros, especially the Nitro replays I really tried to watch. I don't know when they started the Nitro replays, but I started watching them like fall, the fall of 98 is when I started watching Nitro replays. Because I'm sorry, I grew up a WWF guy. Actually, I'm not sorry for that. I grew up a WWF guy. I'm loyal to this day. I'm still loyal to WWE. Even though I love other companies and I support all wrestling companies. But I am loyal. I was loyal to the WWF. That's why I picked Raw over Nitro during the Monday Night Wars. 
So let's get to fantasy booking. I've gone on enough. My point is, without Russo in the Attitude Era, the WWF would have done just fine. They would have done just fine. They would have still had record ratings without Russo because WCW is getting big ratings too. And they didn't have Russo. WCW, in my opinion, especially the NWO, but WCW and the NWO storyline, they lit the business on fire, in my opinion. They uh, they got wrestling a lot more pop, <clears throat> a lot more popular. The NWO got wrestling a hell of a lot more popular, and the WWF benefited from that. On to this fantasy booking. This is part six. Part six, WCW 2000. Part six. And yeah, this is going to be uploaded uh, Friday morning because I don't have work Friday. So why the hell not upload it on Friday mornings? So this is part six, fantasy booking WCW 2000. I'm going to fantasy book a thunder. Fall Brawl 2000 and Halloween Havoc 2000. So three events I'll be fantasy booking. Up first on this Thunder Before Fall Brawl 2000, we got match number six. Match number six in the best of seven series. Match number six. AJ Styles again against Rey Mysterio because they're in a best of seven series. It's a uh, the series is three to two right now. Uh, who the hell leads it? I forget, but it's three to two. So I don't know if Ray or AJ leads the series. I honestly forgot. So go back, watch part five of the fantasy booking of WCW 2000. Anyways, AJ Styles against Rey Mysterio in a ladder match. Or no, let me see here. That's never mind. Forget about that. Uh, this is not match number six of AJ Rey Mysterio. It's match number seven, and that is going to take place after Fall Brawl, and it's a ladder match. So back to Thunder. This is Thunder before Fall Brawl. We got AJ Styles in a pre-taped interview, sit-down interview. AJ Styles, Rey Mysterio go face to face in a sit-down interview. And they go face to face and they're interviewed about their match number seven at Fall Brawl. So the first match of the night is the WCW. I'm trying to think here. So we only got uh, three matches booked for this Thunder before Fall Brawl. So up first we got Rob Van Dam. Rob Van Dam taking on Brett the Hitman Hart of the Canadian World Order, Canada World Order, Brett Hart, RVD, RVD wins. Uh, up next we have the WCW. World champion Lance Storm taking on Kevin Nash. Eric Bischoff is a referee. And uh, Team Canada decides to come out. Team NWO. The NWO comes out. Team Canada. NWO going at it. The whole WCW locker room comes out. And they end up brawling. Up next, the final match the main event. Vampiro taking on Chris Benoit. It is a lights out match. Lights out match. Chris Benoit wins. And uh, after Chris Benoit wins and Vampiro still down in the middle of the ring up in the stands. 
the camera goes on a crow. One of Sting's crows is up in the stands looking down at Van Piro. And that ends this Thunder Before Fall Brawl. Now let's go to Fall Brawl 2000. Pay-per-view. WCW Fall Brawl 2000. A first kicks off with match number seven, the best of seven series. This is match seven, AJ Styles, Rey Mysterio Jr. in a ladder match. The series is tied three to three. This is a ladder match, and the winner will get a cruiserweight title shot at Fall Brawl later in the night. So AJ, Rey Mysterio in a ladder match. Rey Mysterio wins. He's uh, in the Cruiserweight title match later. Rey Mysterio gets a Cruiserweight title shot later in the pay-per-view. Up next, we have the WCW Tag Team Championship on the line. The champions, Booker T, Billy Kidman, take on Edge and Christian of Team Canada. Edge and Christian win. They're the new WCW Tag Team Champions. Up next, we have... WCW Cruiserweight Tag Team Champions Jushin Thunder Lager and Ultimo Dragon, the Cruiserweight Tag Team Champions. I think it's Ultimo Dragon, I believe, and Jushin Thunder Lager are the Cruiserweight Tag Champs. They're defending against a returning to WCW Six Pac. Returns and he teams up with Elix Skipper. Jushin Thunderlager, Ottawa Dragon win. They're still the Cruiserweight Tag Team Champions. Up next, we have at this Fall Brawl 2000, we have for the WCW United States Championship. By the way, at this Fall Brawl, there is a War Games. And that's the main event. Vampiro defends a U.S. title up against La Parca. This is La Parca's final U.S. title shot against Vampiro. And it is a cage match. It's a cage match. Vampiro defending the U.S. title against La Parca. The lights go out during the cage match. Sting appears. In the ring with a baseball bat. Takes out Vampiro with the bat. La Parca wins. La Parca, the new WCW United States Champion. Now to the main event. To the main event. WCW War Games match. For the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. We got Team Canada. Against the NWO. On Team Canada, you got Bret Hart, Lance Storm, Edge and Christian. On the NWO, you got Hollywood Hogan, Kevin Ash, Scott Hall, and Sid. And Eric Bischoff, before the war games start, he comes out, he gets on the mic and says, the start of this war games, it's every man for himself. And the winner, by submission or pinfall, the winner becomes WCW World Champion. Well, Lance Storm wins. Lance Storm wins, retains, and is still the WCW World Champion at Fall Brawl 2000. So that is Fall Brawl 2000. Now we go, we're going to skip through a lot of October. We're going to go all the way to Halloween Havoc. WCW Halloween Havoc 2000. So at Halloween Havoc 2000, we're going to kick it off with the WCW Hardcore Championship on the line. Rob Van Dam, the champion, defends against Mike Awesome. Rob Van Dam wins, still a champ. Four. Let's just say, uh, no, I'm not going to do the world title match next. That is the main event. For the WCW United States title, La Parca, champion for about a month, 
La Parka defends against DDP. Diamond Dallas Page, La Parka loses the U.S. title to DDP. WCW Cruiserweight Tag Team Titles. Jushin, Thunder Lager, and Ultimo Dragon defend against Hakushi. Yes, he was in WWF, but he's in WCW now. I brought him in. I don't know what his name was in Japan, but I'm going to just call him Hakushi and Hayabusa. Hayabusa worked for M, not M. Hayabusa worked for FMW in Japan for a pretty long time. So Hakushi and Hayabusa, if you've never seen them, they actually teamed before at ECW's Heat Wave 98 pay-per-view. I always thought they were a pretty damn good team together. So they get a Cruiserweight Tag Team title shot. Ultimo Dragon, Jushin, Thunder, Lager, win, and retain. For the WCW Cruiserweight title, Rey Mysterio Jr. defends against Eddie Guerrero. Eddie Guerrero wins. Up next, we have a tag team match. Elix Skipper, Stevie Ray, Harlem Heat, 2000. Who's their opponents? Well, it's a surprise. It's a mystery team. It's a one-off appearance. Elix Skipper, Stevie Ray, Harlem Heat, 2000. Take on the Road Warriors for a one-off appearance. I think that'd be pretty awesome. Road Warriors would have got a huge pop. At Halloween Havoc 2000. So next we have. For the WCW. Cruiserweight. Not Cruiserweight. For the WCW Tag Team Titles. Edge and Christian defeat. The Harris Brothers. Ron and Don Harris. Up next we have. Let's see here. Let's go with, uh, I'm next we have Goldberg, Goldberg in a handicap match. Goldberg takes on the Outsiders, Hall and Nash. If Goldberg wins, he gets three minutes, three minutes along with Eric Bischoff to beat the hell out of him. So Goldberg against the Outsiders, two on one. Goldberg wins. Gets Eric Bischoff for three minutes and immediately busts open Eric Bischoff. Bischoff is bleeding a lot. And then Bischoff gets speared and jackhammered. One, two, three. Goldberg destroys Bischoff and bloodies him in about a minute. So now before the main event. Actually, there's going to be two main events. At Halloween Havoc 2000, the WCW World title will be defended twice. Stay tuned to listen. Bret Hart, before the WCW World title, it's a spin the wheel, make the deal match. I always thought that was a cool gimmick they used to have at Halloween Havoc. They only did it, I believe, at 92 and 93's Halloween Havoc. They had spin the wheel, make the deal. So Bret Hart from Team Canada, Bret the Hitman Hart takes on Hollywood Hogan. In a spin the wheel, make the deal match, and it is a first blood match. And I would have uh, Bret Hart winning. Bret Hart wins, defeats Hollywood Hogan. If that was real life, I'm sure uh, Hogan would have... Took his pen and did creative control and put himself over Bret Hart in a first blood match. I don't see Hogan. I'm talking about real life. I don't see Hogan ever jobbing to Bret Hart and putting him over. Especially in a gimmick match. But this is my fantasy booking. Bret Hart defeats Hollywood Hogan because I'm sorry. I love Hogan. But Bret Hart was. Uh, my the video has gotten darker. I apologize. Hollywood Hogan, Bret Hart in uh, 2000, late 2000. 
Brett was younger, so I would have put him over Hogan. And I did. In a first blood. Now for to the main event for the WCW World title. Lance Storm from Team Canada. Lance Storm, the WCW World Champion, defends against Vampiro. Vampiro wins the WCW World title. As I said in my earlier parts of this fantasy booking for WCW 2000, as I said, I was going to really push RVD, Vampiro, and La Parca because I'm big fans of those guys. Or at least I was in the year 2000. Or looking back on it, uh, Vampiro and La Parca should have been pushed way more in WCW. They really should have been. Because they were awesome. So, Van P Vampiro, your new WCW World Champion. He's holding up the title, celebrating on the ropes, and the lights go out again. And then there's a crow noise. Lights go back on. Sting is in the middle of the ring with a baseball bat on his shoulders. Sting gets on the mic. And I've had Vampiro and Sting feud. For quite a long time throughout the year. So Sting gets on the mic, says Vampiro. He says, I want a world title shot. Put your money where your mouth is. Put the WCW world title on the line. Let's go at it. Let's get it on right now. Crowd is going insane. And Vampiro says, why not? Vampiro, he was uh, kind of tricked and uh, putting the title on the line, but he decides to put it on the line. Vampiro versus Sting for the second WCW World title match of the night at Halloween Havoc 2000. Vampiro defends and wins and retains against Sting when he hits him with a low blow. Referee did not see it. One, two, three. Vampiro wins, retains, is still WCW World Champion. So the pay-per-view goes off the air with Vampiro as your WCW World Champion at Halloween Havoc. He defeated Lance Storm to win it. He defended against Sting in a surprise title defense. So that ends Halloween Havoc 2000. This ends my fantasy booking of WCW 2000 Part 6. I'll be back with a Part 7. I don't think I'm going to book the November pay-per-view because the November pay-per-view in 2000 was Mayhem. Mayhem. God-awful name for a pay-per-view. And it was not a good pay-per-view. It was Mayhem. I never liked the name, so I'm probably not going to book a November pay-per-view. Probably book Nitros and Thunders up to Starcade at the end of December. Part 7 might be my final part for the fantasy booking of WCW 2000. I hope you enjoyed Part 6. Vampiro, your new WCW World Champion. Bye for now, everybody. Have a great weekend.